And he will say, and you give a count of you say, your work shall be burned from the fire, your bad work shall be burned once you've been saved, be caught outright. You will give a count. If you are not saved, you will go to hell. But if you're saved, you will give a count. The works will be burned, and the good works shall be stoned. Cast the foot of Christ, and you preach the cross. What, no, what's your name, sir? Sir, stay, don't, 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 don't just stay here, okay? Are you safe, sir? That's the big question. He's right, everything that that man said, he's right. You're safe, you're safe, sir, okay? But what about the other people going by? Are these all going to heaven? No, unless Yeah, so we're on the same team, so what are you doing, my friend? Let's stay on the same team if we believe that. We're out here to tell people about Jesus. As that man said, all of your works will stand before God. But the Bible says that we're not saved by works, it's by grace you can be saved. And the only way you can be saved when all of your life is in front of your mighty creator and he says, why have you rejected my son? Why should I let you into heaven? What would your answer be? You died and you stood before God right now and he said, why should I let you into heaven? What would your answer be? If you say I've been a good person, I've been to church, I'm sorry that's the wrong answer. The only answer a man or woman can give on that day is because Jesus Christ died on a cross for me. Do you know they beat him? Do you know they spat on him? Do you know they smashed the crown of thorns into his skull? Do you know they put nails through his hands and his feet? They're the innocent one, the darling of heaven, God in a skin, bled and died on a cross for you because he loved you. The one who'd done nothing wrong died the most cruel death so that you could be saved. Because in that moment, it wasn't just a physical suffering, but in that moment, a legal transaction took place. The worst of you, all of your sin, all the darkness, all the rottenness of you was laid on Jesus Christ and he was crucified, he was punished and the wrath of God was poured out on Jesus Christ so you could be forgiven, so you could have a home in heaven. And you have a choice right now, my friend. You have a choice to either receive Jesus Christ and receive that, that sacrifice, or you say, no, I'm okay. And if you do that, then the Bible says you can't do anything else for you. It's appointed for man once to die, and after that, the judgment. Who loves you. There's a God who died for you. There's a God who cares about you. Now you're going to school. You tell me, what are you taught at school, guy, today? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Yeah, you told those guys. I, I don't. I believe it. You know, I believe it. Are you told there's a God that loves you when you're going to school? Are you told you came from an animal? Are you told you? You see, is there any wonder why uh, Generation Z they call it the generation of anxiety? There's more people who are saying, I don't know what to do in my life. I've got no purpose, no meaning, and they're going to the science lesson, and you're told you come from an animal. Is it any wonder when we get people acting like animals? Big questions today, I'm asking you today. Here's another question for you. For those of you who stopped and listened now, when you leave in a minute's time, will you have more or less heartbeats? Over to you. You'll have less, won't you? Every single one of us is winding down. Every single one of us is getting that bit closer to the grave. And here's the big question. When you step in that grave, are you ready to meet your maker? Are you ready to meet the one who knows everything about you? The one who knows the very hairs of your head. The one who loves you, the one who died for you, knows your cares and anxieties. Are you ready to meet your God? The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Be ready to meet him. Because we've all done sins, haven't we? And one day the books are going to be opened. That lie that you said, those things you've forgotten about, that rude stuff you looked at on the internet, the time you got drunk, the time you had sex out of marriage, all of that sin will be open and you will stand before your God naked. You can't blame it on someone else on that day. You can't say, oh, I've got a mate who's a Christian on that day. You will stand before God. So I plead with you today, turn to the Son of God, the one who loves you to pieces, the one who calls all men everywhere to repent. Turn from your sins and turn to Christ Jesus, the one who did everything on the cross. Please, my dear friends of Preston, please consider what I'm saying today. Don't listen to all the nonsense the scientists are saying that there's no God, that atheism, that's the way to go. Don't listen to all those who are preaching false religions. There's only one way to God, and that's through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The cults won't save you. False religion won't save you. Only Jesus Christ will save you. Why? Because only Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. Is there anyone going by today who is risen from the dead? Yeah. You've risen, have you, yeah? Yeah, I just think you're high as a kite, my friend. Yeah, I'm saying, listen, is there anyone who's literally been flatlined dead for three days and then risen from the dead? No one has done it except for the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why you are so wise to put your faith 
in him. He's conquered the grave and he'll give you eternal life. What do you think of a man who jumped out of a plane without a parachute? You'd say that man is stupid. You'd say that man is foolish. And yet millions of people leave planet Earth without the Son of God who can beat their grave. Millions turn away from the Son of God, the one who can conquer their grave. And they say, I'm okay. I'll stand before God by myself. Please, please consider these things. Jesus loves you. He died. He was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Turn to him today while you still have breath in your lungs. Because someone right now might not make it tomorrow. Someone right now might not be here tomorrow. So you come to Christ right now while you still have chance.